go. Amen. But by the second month or third month, I'll be an expert utilizing this Zoom and all of its features. And so I just want to um, thank you all for coming on on tonight. And I just want to begin as, as usual with just a portion of scripture, which is going to frame our prayer on tonight. And as always on Thursday, I'm always saying, Lord, what would you have me to share with the women that will be on? And what God reminded me of this morning, so funny. So <laughs> um, and the Lord oh shit, I already told you what I want you to tell them. And, and that was last week what the Lord spoke to my heart was a passage of scripture from the book of Zechariah. And I'm going to turn there. If you have me on video, you will be able to see. And I'm just going to go to um, just online Bible. And and I'm looking at the first passage of scriptures found in Zechariah, the fourth chapter. And Zechariah, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start from verse one. As I put my chair up and some from verse one of Zechariah, the fourth chapter. And it says, and the angel who talked with me came again and woke me like a man who was awakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? I said, I see and behold a lampstand, all of gold, with a bowl on the top of it, and seven lamps on it with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on the top of it. And there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. And he shall bring forward the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands also, his, excuse me, his hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whosoever has despised the day of small, of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hands of Zerubbabel. I love this portion of scripture. And if I was reading and you said to yourself, I never heard that before. I don't know what she's talking about. Don't worry about it. I'm going to make it plain in just a few moments. This is a, a, a prophecy that comes to Zechariah. And he is speaking about a man by the name of Zerubbabel. And what's so important about Zerubbabel is that Zerubbabel was amongst a group of people that went to rebuild the temple. They went to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And so you can imagine, and, and I'm not going to share the whole story, and we're going to talk more about Zerubbabel on another time. But for tonight's purpose, I want to focus on the fact that Zerubbabel and the others that were with him had this great task they had to accomplish which was to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem that had been destroyed. A, a monumental task. But guess what? They had to start in the, small, in the small beginning before the temple was completed. And the other portion of scripture that gives you just a little bit of backdrop is, is, is Ezra, the third chapter. And starting at the 10th verse, it says, and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord. The priests in their vestments came forward with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph with symbols to praise the Lord according to the directions of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And so you have this bunch of people who have started a work. They've only started building the temple. They've only laid the foundation. So whatever has to go in the bottom, right? That's the part that they've done. They've only done the foundation. 
But in Ezra, we see that they stopped after building the foundation. And what did they do? They began giving God praise. They began praising God because though the temple was not completed, they started. Though it wasn't finished, they started. Sometimes we get hung up on the fact that we haven't arrived to our destiny as of yet. We get hung up on the fact that we have not finished the task as of yet. And we forget to praise God even in the beginning. And so when we go back to Zechariah, it helps make a little bit more sense why the word of the Lord would come to Zerubbabel to strengthen him, to say to him, don't get discouraged by the fact that this is only the beginning. Don't get discouraged by the fact that all you have is a plumb line, you know, the foundation. If it was today's time, and when you're building the foundation of something, you're talking about the plumbing, you're talking about the electricity, right? But back then they wouldn't have had electricity, but they would also have pipes. They would also have uh, support beams and, and things that had to support the thing before it being built. That thing was built and they stopped and they gave God praise. Wherever you are today, I want to remind you, although you may not have made it to the end yet, I want to encourage you to give God praise. It is so vitally important that you praise God in the middle of it, knowing that it's, you're not going to be the one, you're not going to accomplish the end of it in your own strength or your own power. But just like the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel in Zechariah 4, right? Because what does it say? It says, in, and let me find it. In verse, in verse 6, he said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, this word came to strengthen Zerubbabel, saying Zerubbabel, right now, all you can see is the foundation. Right now, all you can see is the part you played in it. And so Zachariah, I'm sorry, Zerubbabel played a part of laying the plumbing, that foundation, right? If that's all he could see, right, he's coming to strengthen him to say, right now, you may only see the little ingredient that you worked on so far. Maybe right now, you could only see the portion that you worked on so far. Maybe right now, you can only see the one chapter you have completed. Maybe right now, you could only see the one bill that you were able to, to, to pay off. Right now, you can only see the little bit, but know this, it has to start little before it gets big. The word comes and says, listen, remember, it's not going to happen by your own might. It's not going to happen by your own strength. It's not going to happen by your own power. But guess what? It's going to happen. But praise God now, even while it still looks little, even while it still looks like it's a small thing, give God praise right now. And I want to caution us, and then we're going to close in, in this portion, and then we're going to go into prayer. I want to caution us because when we look in Ezra, the third chapter, and we go back to the 10th verse, the 10th verse says that the builders laid the foundation of the temple, right? Right? And so all the priests, everyone is gathered because they are following the instructions that the Lord had previously given to King David. And so they've done the first part. They're giving praise. And so I would encourage you, woman of God, as you are moving forward and whatever God has instructed you to do, for every stage that you accomplish, stop and give him praise. You need to celebrate how far you have come. Don't focus all the time on the finish line, but focus on the fact that today you were walking by faith and you did something that you didn't do on yesterday. So every step of the journey, give God praise. But in this passage of scripture, it tells us that in, in the 12th verse, it says many of the priests and Levites and heads of fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first house, wept with a loud voice when they saw the foundation of this house being laid, though many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping, for the people shouted with a great shout, and the sound was heard far away. This is what was happening. So the foundation is laid and people are excited. They're giving God praise. But there is a segment of the people where it sounds like they're praising God. It sounds, because it sounds like everybody's screaming, everyone's shouting. So it sounds like they're praising. It sounds like they're worshiping. But they were really mourning for what they had before instead of focusing on what God was doing right now. And so as we talk about moving into whatever it is that God has for us, be careful that you're not despising what God is doing right now. Be careful that you are not despising what 
he has given you to begin. Because if we look at the small things and say, oh, this is nothing, we are despising how God is working this thing out. We are despising how God is beginning a work in us. And so don't be like these that sound like they were praising God, but they were really complaining. It sounds like they were praising God, but they were really focused on what they used to have. They were really focused on, man, I wish it could be like this. Man, I wish it could be like that. But this evening, we take this word of God, and I come speaking it over you, not to despise what God has you right now. Do not despise the beginning of your journey. Do not despise the beginning of whatever it is that God has placed on you. Maybe right now it's just a page, but praise God for the page. Right now it may just be an outline, but praise him for the outline. Maybe right now you only have one person that is supporting you. Praise God for the one person. Do not despise how God is beginning this thing in you. Don't look at it as something little. Don't look at it as something um, um, uh, it, it doesn't matter. But remember that much is little in God's hands. Remember that you are not the one that's going to do it. But as we've already read in Zechariah, the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel saying in the, in the ninth verse, in the sixth verse, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And the last thing we'll look at is that seventh verse. It said, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And so you can look at whatever seems difficult to you, and you can look at it and say, who are you, great mountain? Who are you? What are you that is standing in my way, making me think? that I can't do it, making me think that where I am right now is insignificant, making me think that what I have right now means nothing. Satan, you are a liar. And so, Father, tonight we come to you in prayer, God, thanking you for where you have us right now. God, we thank you for the time that you have us in. For God, we know that there is a season for every activity under heaven. God, we know, Heavenly Father, that this is the day that you have called us to be in. This is the time that you have called us to be in. God, you have called us to be on purpose, in person, in purpose, God, in sync with you. For God, we know that there is a time for every single activity under heaven. God, we know that you are in our midst. God, we know that you see us and that you know us and that you know everything there is to know about us. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you are awesome. We thank you, God, that you are amazing. We thank you, Lord, that you don't put us in anything that you are not going to see us through. And so, Father, tonight, first, we want to ask that you would forgive us for despising the day of small beginnings. God, forgive us for turning our nose down on something that's small because we can't see the greatness in it. God, forgive us for minimizing what you've given us. God, forgive us for, for comparing ourselves to others. Forgive us, God, for thinking of ourselves as less than. God, forgive us for thinking because we don't have it all together yet that it means nothing. But God, as we read in your word, though it may just be a plumb line, though it may just be the foundation, God, we thank you that the foundation has been set. God, we thank you that you are in the midst of it and that you are leading us and that you are guiding us. God, we thank you that you are directing us. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you praise on this night. God, we pray that you would change our thinking from being people that would, would tear down what you are doing, from being a people, God, that would minimize what you're doing in our lives, for being a people, God, that wouldn't be able to see the, the greatness in it and the beauty of it. God, I pray that you would remove complaints from our lips, remove fussing from our lips, remove God belittling from our lips, but God instead calls for us to be a people of praise. God calls for us to be women who will praise you at all times, no matter what it looks like, no matter whether it's little, no matter whether it's great. And so tonight we focus on God giving you praise for what you've given us thus far. And God, we look at that which you've given us. We look at that business. We look at that organization, that ministry, that dream, that God dream that you have put in our hearts. God, we look at it, God, and we know, God, that you are the one that's going to bring it to pass. But God, we believe, God, that it's by your might, by your power, and by your spirit that you are the one that's going to do it. So help us tonight, God, to realize that it's not about our own strength. It's not about our own 
intelligence. It's not about our own goodness. It's not about anything about us. But God, it's all about you and the fact that you choose to use us. God, help us to see that where you have us right now, it's a good place. God, help us to see that where you have us in our walk with you, it's a good place. God, help us to see that even the little thing, God, that we're able to do right now, it's a good place. Help us, God, to remain in step with you. Help us, God, to remain in sync with you. Keep us from comparing ourselves to other people. Keep us from looking at others and saying that we should have this by now, or we should be there by now, or we should be doing this by now. But God, we thank you that our times are in your hands. God, we thank you tonight. Oh God, we thank you that there is a season for every activity under heaven. And God, we thank you that no matter what the season looks like us, it looks like to us in the natural, that in every single season we shall bear fruit as long as we are planted in you, as long as we are abiding in you. And so God, we thank you for the little thing. God, we thank you for though it may be little in our eyes, it is great before you. For God, you know the end of the thing, for you are the author and finisher of our faith. God, you are the one that has given us every dream, every idea. You are the one that's given us every single vision. You're the one that put the passion in our hearts. You are the one that has gifted us. You are the one that has filled us with your Holy Spirit. You are the one that is speaking to us and giving us visions and, and, and greater understanding. You are the one that's opening our eyes. And so, God, we give you praise tonight. And God, we thank you for even choosing us. God, we thank you for even deeming us worthy to do what you called us to do. God, we're grateful that you want to use us. God, we're grateful that you want to use us women who are not perfect, women who don't do things all right all the time, women who aren't the best at everything. But God, we thank you that what qualifies us is our heart towards you. God, we thank you that what qualifies is that us that we love you and that we are servants of yours. And so God, tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would, we would tear down in the spirit. God, every mindset that is contrary to what you have established for us, every mindset that will compare ourselves to others and try to compete with others, we tear it down now in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we pray that the mind that is in Christ Jesus would also be in us, that we would be sober-minded, not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to, but God, thinking of ourselves according to the measure of faith that you have given each and every one of us calls for us to recognize God that what you have for us is for us we don't have to compete we don't have to um covet we don't have to be envious we don't have to be jealous of what anybody else is doing and God we thank you that you have a specific timetable for every single one of us you have a specific working and details and structure and organization for every single one of our lives and so God one person may be here but you may have us there but God we thank you that where you have us is where you want us to be and so tonight I pray in the name of Jesus, that you would stir up every single gift that you have put in us, inside of us, oh God. God, stir it up in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that we would begin to take the beginning of the thing that you have given us. And God, that we would begin to work on that thing. God, we would begin to work on it and perfect it, whatever it is, God, whatever instructions that you have given us. God, that we would begin to follow through on it. And God, every step that we take, we will pause to say thank you. Every achievement that we make, we will pause to say thank you. God, every task that we check off of our list, we will pause to say thank you. For God, we know that it will happen just like you spoke to Zerubbabel, he will finish it. And so God, we know that we will finish it. God, we know in fact that it's a finished work. But God, right now, we praise you for the step of faith that we taken already. God, we praise you for the steps that we've already done. God, we praise you for the ways that we've already obeyed you. And God, we give you praise for the, uh, the rest of the instructions that you're going to give us. And God, every set of instructions you give us, we shall be faithful. We will obey, oh God, and we will do every single thing you've called us to do. And so God, whether we only at the foundation or we're at the finish line, we give you praise. For you are the same one, God, who brings us to the end that who starts us for God you are the end of the thing God you know the end from the beginning you know how it's going to turn out you know what it's going to look like you know who's going to show up God you know who's 
going to be there. And so, God, right now, we're just walking out our obedience. And so, God, remove discouragement from us tonight. Remove that competitiveness from us on this night. But God, cause for us to walk in humility. Cause for us God, to be humble and meek. Cause for us to be gentle. Cause for us, oh God, to be women, Lord, who will not walk in arrogance or pride, but that we would walk knowing, God, that you are the source of our strength. You are the source of our help. You are the one that helps us. You are the one that's going to do it. And so any mindset that thinks we're going to have to do it, that we have to muster up the strength and the energy to do it, we tear down that lie right now in the name of Jesus. God, we know that all we have to do is abide in you. For God, your word says that if we abide in you and your words abide in us, God, that we shall ask whatever we need, God, and you shall grant it unto us. And so, God, as we walk out this thing, as we walk out our calling, help us to abide in you. God, help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. God, help us to sit at your feet. God, help us to worship you. Help us to serve you. Help us to do your will. Help us to honor you. God, help us to focus on you, not focusing on what it looks like, but God, focus on you. God, not focusing on what other people are doing and, and how we can catch up to them, but instead focusing on what you would have us to do right now in this season of our lives. God, but we don't have to walk anybody else's walk. We don't have to run anybody else's race, but God, we only have to pick up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow after you. And God, there's a way that you have for every single one of us to take. There is a path that you have specifically laid out for each and every one of our lives. Help us, God, to run the race that you have given us. Help us, God, to walk on the path that you have given us. God, keep us from trying to walk on somebody else's path. God, keep us from trying for, for, for God entering into doing things that other people have been called to do but cause for us to be a people God who would know what you called us to do and we will be focused on that not trying to be and do all things but focus God on being every single thing that you have called for us to be and so heavenly father we pray in the name of Jesus that you will transform us by your power on this night God that you will transform us by your spirit and God right now we stand in the authority that you have given us and we tear down jealousy and competition and envy and, and covetousness in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we don't want anything else that somebody else has. God, we only want what you want for us. We only desire what you desire for us. God, we only long for the things that you long for us. And so help us, Holy Spirit, tonight. Help us not to look at our sisters with envy in our hearts. Help us not to look and to secretly talk about them in, in our minds, to secretly talk about them under our breath. But cause us to truly support and encourage one another. Cause us, God, to truly boost people up and to encourage them in their journey as we are doing what you called us to do. God, help us to be obedient every step of the way. Whatever you speak, cause, help us to do it. God, that we wouldn't just be hearers of your word, but that we would hear your word and we would do it. So teach us, help us, show us, Holy Spirit, how to be willing and obedient, that we would obey with cheer in our hearts. We would obey with worship in our hearts. When you tell us to step away, we would step away. When you tell us to step up, we would step up. When you tell us to repent, we would repent. When you would tell us that to go and humble ourselves and to act with forgiveness, that we would do exactly what you have spoken to us to do. And so God, remove, rip out of us, God, tear out of us rebelliousness in the name of Jesus. And God, we cast it off of ourselves. We cast off rebelliousness. We cast off resistance to your will. We cast off the resistance to walking in humility. We cast off the resistance to walking, oh God, in humbling ourselves. And God, we tear down pride in the name of Jesus. We snatch it off of us and we cast it away in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare out of our mouth that we will humble ourselves under your mighty hand. God, knowing that in due season, you will exalt us. God, if we humble ourselves before you. And so tonight, we glorify your name. Tonight, we magnify your name. Tonight, we exalt your name and we say thank you. We exalt your name and we honor you. We exalt your name and we glorify you. 
you. We exalt your name and we glorify and honor your holy name for you are mighty. You are awesome. You are amazing, God, in every single one of your ways. And God, we thank you that you have chosen us. We thank you that you care about us. We thank you you that you love us we thank you that you have come after us god we're so grateful on this night and so god we speak over our situation tonight that is not by might it's not by power but it's by your spirit we speak over our situation and no obstacle will be able to stop us from doing what you have called us to do god we speak over the thing god that we will finish we will accomplish every single thing that you have purpose for us to do god it shall come to pass. It is already so. And so, God, we thank you tonight, God, that we won't be discouraged about where we are right now. We thank you tonight that we won't compare where we are against where somebody else is. God, we thank you tonight that there is a walk that each and every one of us have to walk. And God, we don't know what the next person has to go through to get where they are today. But God, we don't want to sabotage our blessings. God, we don't want to walk into something in another person's lane. But God, we want to stay right in the lane that you have called for us. And God, we want to do every single thing that you have called for us to do. And so Holy Spirit, have your way in us on tonight. Breathe on every heart. Breathe on every mind. Touch every soul in the mighty name of Jesus and have your way. Do a mighty thing in our midst. Do a mighty thing in our hearts. Do a mighty thing right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you. And right now you are breaking off that spirit of jealousy off of your daughters in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, that you will rip it out of our hearts, God. That it won't even be there. There won't be an inkling. There won't be nothing that ever that even resembles it. There will be nothing in it that will call in our hearts that will cause us to hate on one another, to tear down one another, to secretly hope that the other person fails. God, remove that out of our hearts. Remove envy from our hearts, God, where we can get so angry that one person has this and we don't have that. God, remove that from our hearts. But teach us how to truly support. Teach us how to truly build up and love on one another. God, I pray that for every woman that is on this conference line, that we would be the kind of women that we can support one another. We would be the kind of women that we could build one another up in love. God, I thank you that none of the women on this line tonight will be catty or nasty or backstabbing. I thank you, God, that every woman on this line will be honorable. God, that they would walk up right before you, God, and their yes would be yes and their no would be no. God, I pray that you would take out of us the slandering and gossiping tongues and God instead calls for our tongues to be pure. God, purify our speech, purify our hearts, oh God. Remove hatred out of our hearts from one another. Remove anger out of our hearts toward one another. Remove God's selfishness, God, where we want to hoard all the blessings to ourselves. Remove it out of our hearts, but God, help us to know that everything that we have is from you. Everything that we receive is from you. And who are we to keep it all to ourselves? But you've called us to be lenders one to another. And God, we know that it's better to give and then to receive. And so transform our hearts tonight. God calls for self selfishness, jealousy, envy, and bickering to be removed in the name of Jesus and cause for kindness and meekness and gentleness of heart and unselfishness to be in our hearts. Holy Spirit, produce your fruit on the inside of us and make us over, transform us, make us into women that are honorable, make us into women that know who we are. Help us to know who we are, God. God, some of us are unhappy because we don't know who we are and we don't know who and what you have called us to be and to do. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would remove discontentment from our hearts, remove sadness from our hearts. God, remove it from our hearts and cause us to be people that would be content. Teach us, oh God, how to be content right where you have us right now doing what you called us to do. God, put a contentment in our hearts that even if you just have us doing one thing right now, and we know ultimately you'll have us doing more, but God, let there be a contentment for the season you have us in right now. For God, we know that our times are in your hands and you know exactly what you are doing. God, I thank you 
that you know exactly what you're doing. God, I thank you that you know exactly what we're ready for and what we're not ready for. God, I thank you that you know what we can handle and what we can't handle. God, you know what we're mature enough for and what we're not mature enough for. God, I thank you because some of us, God, we've been asking you to advance us, to promote us and do certain things, but God, truly, we're not ready for it. So Holy Spirit, show us who we are. Holy Spirit, show us where we are. Show us where we are. Show us where we need to mature. Show us where we need to, to, to come up. Show us where we need to, to grow up. Show us, Holy Spirit, show us in the areas where we're lacking. Show us in the areas where we have not been um, disciplined like we need to. We're not doing that which we need to. Help us, Holy Spirit, show us, open our eyes. Cause for us to see. Cause for us to see. And so, God, I thank you that the path that you have for each and every one of us, it's a good path. God, I thank you that the cross you have for us individually, it's good for us. God, I thank you that we're not going to try to carry anyone else's, and we're not going to try to do what anyone else does. But God, we're going to do what you have called for us to do in the way that you have called for us to be. God, I come against, Lord, mimicking and copying after one another. But God, I pray that you would give us the boldness, God, and the confidence, God, to be uniquely the women that you called us to be. God, for we don't have to be like our sister, but all we have to be is like you. So God, take our personalities and make us more like you. Take our uniqueness, God, and make us more like you. Take the things that stand out about us and make us more like you. But Lord, I pray that we would never be afraid to shine in the uniqueness that you have given us. We will never be afraid to do to be the women that you called us to be the way that you called us to be. And so, God, have your way in us tonight, God. I thank you for freedom. I thank you tonight, God, that you remove from us jealousy and envy and competition, false competition, Lord. God, I thank you that tonight, God, you remove from us the desire to be someone else and to do what someone else is called to do. But, God, I thank you tonight that we have an appreciation for where we are right now. I thank you tonight, God, that we have contentment right where we are. God, whether we have little or whether we have much, God, I thank you that tonight, God, is good. God, I thank you that your plans are good. Your ways for us are good. The path you have for us is good. The destiny you have for us is good. The instructions you have for us is good. The journey you have for us is good. The mountain you have for us is good. The valley you have for us it's good. Wherever you want to use us, it's good. Whomever you want to use us with, it's good. God, how, when you want to use us, it's good. The way you want to use us, it's good. The way you have gifted us, is good. The way you have anointed us, it's good. The way you have created us, it's good. The way you have gifted us, it's good. God, I thank you tonight that everything about us that you have created it is good. God, I pray for those who've been walking around feeling less than. I pray for those tonight, God, who've been walking around feeling like they don't measure up. That they're not good enough, God. I pray in the name of Jesus against that mindset. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. Every lie that you have sent, Satan, we reverse it in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that your daughters are worth everything you have for them. God, I thank you that they are good enough to receive all that you have for them, God, because they are your daughters. God, none of us are good because of our own merit. We're good because you say we are because we've been made righteous through Christ Jesus. And so right now, God, I come against the spirit of condemnation and, 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 and false humility. Come against it now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we tear it down. We tear it out from its roots in the name of Jesus. For we have not been given condemnation. Condemnation does not come from the Father. Condemnation does not come from you, God. Condemnation comes from the enemy. And we send it back to the pits of hell, which it comes from in the name of Jesus. 
We are not condemned, but God, we thank you that we have been set free. We thank you that we have been forgiven. God, we thank you that you let us off the hook. God, I thank you that you dismissed the case. God, you have absolved it. We are free to do your will. We are free. God, I thank you. And so God calls us no longer to walk around with that wrong thinking that says we can't or we're not good enough or we're not worthy. God, we come against that mindset in the name of Jesus. But God, you have chosen us and that's enough. That settles it. You have called us. That's enough. That settles it. You say that we can. That's enough. That settles it. God, we come against excuses that we put up before you. God, we tear them down right now in the name of Jesus. Every excuse as to why we can't. Every excuse as to why we want won't. Every excuse, we come against it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against it. God, we come against any mindset that says we're behind some kind of timetable. We should have been here by now. We should have been doing that by now. We come against that now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. That time is in your hands and God, in your kingdom. God, things don't operate like it does in the world. And so God, change our thinking and we will no longer be a people who would take foolishness out of our mouths. God, for your, our times are in your hands, and so change our minds tonight, God, sanctify our thought, every ungodly thought be torn down in the name of Jesus, every impure thought be torn down in the name of Jesus, every unrighteous thought be torn down in the name of Jesus, that thought that says we can't and we won't, you are a liar, that is not true in the name of Jesus, we cast it off, and so God, I pray the, I pray God, the blood of Jesus upon your daughters on this night, God, let the blood of Jesus saturate their hearts, let the blood of Jesus saturate their minds. Let the blood of Jesus saturate their soul. Let the blood of Jesus penetrate their entire being. And God, all false thinking, all impurities come out now in the name of Jesus. Let the mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in us, God. Let the mind that's in Christ Jesus be in us. Every lie of the enemy be torn down now in the name of Jesus. Every lie that says we can't, every lie that says God is forgotten, we take you down in the name of Jesus, but right where we are, God, we thank you that you have us here. And so, God, we thank you tonight for your word. God, no longer will we despise where you have us, but God, where you have us, we will be faithful. We will be faithful, God, if we're working on the foundation, we'll be faithful to finish it. If we're working on the first floor, we'll be faithful to finish it. The second, the third, God, wherever you have us, whatever you have us doing, God, we thank you for where you have us right now. God, we give you praise for right where we are. We thank you that you have brought us this far. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for where you have us right now. We will not beat ourselves up. We will not call ourselves failures. We will not call ourselves a mistake. We will not say that we are good enough. We, we reverse every curse that we have spoken over ourselves in the name of Jesus. Every curse that we've spoken over ourselves, we break it. We reverse it. We ask for your forgiveness, God, in the name of Jesus. We will not curse what you have blessed. But God, we stand on your word. We agree with your word. In the name of Jesus, God, we are who you say that we are. And so we honor you tonight. God, I pray that every woman, God, wherever they are and they walk with you, that they will come to know you like they've never known you before. God, I pray, God, that you will cause them to experience you in a fresh and vibrant way. God, those who've been on the fence, not serving you the way that they should, God, I pray that they would serve you with all of their heart, all of their might, all of their strength. God, those who have been serving you but are just distracted by all the cares of this life, all the things that they're going through in this moment, God, I pray that you give them the balance and the focus that they need. God, those who just need extra strength, God, give them strength. God, every single one of us, God, I thank you that we're going to do it, whatever that it is, not by our might, but by your might. Not by our power, but by your power. Not by our spirit, but by your spirit. And God, we thank you that it's a finished work. It's already done. So God, we praise you tonight. We glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
I want to remind you tonight that it's already done. Whatever that thing is, it's already done. When I say it's already done, the Lord, who is the author and finisher of our faith, we know that if God has spoken something to us, he's already made provision for it. We as believers, we just need to be faithful to do our part. And so wherever you have, wherever he has you right now, that's a good place. Be faithful. Do whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing right now. And when it's time for the next phase, he will advance you to the next phase. But don't try to jump to another level when you haven't mastered the level you're on right now. Don't try to move out of season. Don't try to be, don't be out of sync with where God wants you to be. But remain in step where he has you. Stop despising where he has you. Stop beating yourself up. Stop saying that this is nothing, this is little, you know, oh, this is little thing I did. Stop saying, stop speaking that. I hate when people get up to speak and they go, oh, you know, I don't, you know, I don't usually do this. You know, I'm not too good at this. You know, I tried, but I, the devil is a liar. You are standing in defeat. You are standing and I'm not good enough and I don't know and I'm going to try. That is not who God has called us to be. So woman of God, stand boldly <laughs> and who he's called you to be. Wherever he has you right now, if it's in the basement building, that is good. If he has you on the top floor building, that is good. And if you're nearing the finish line, it's good. But if you're at the beginning, that's good too. Don't despise small beginnings. Everything that is big was once small. Everything. And so have a good night's rest. I'm trying to do better with time. And so it's keeping it at this 45 minute mark. Have a wonderful night's rest. Um, go check out the website, read the latest um, story. Um, the first story is about Tanea J makeup and how she got started. Next week, you'll hear the rest of her story, which is really the story. <laughs> and how she had to walk out faith and trust God for what she believed he had for her. And so check it out. And always the recordings are online as well. So God bless you all. Good night. Thank you.